Good morning. Good morning. It is my honor to welcome you all here today as we gather as a community of faith to witness and celebrate two men as they further their commitment to serve God and the young people entrusted to their care. On behalf of the Christian Brothers of LaSalle Academy, I'd like to extend our heartfelt welcome to Stephen's mother, Vera, and the rest of the Barbaro family. Thank you for sharing your Stephen with us. To our LaSallean colleagues from Central Catholic and LaSalle Academy, thank you for your support of Stephen and Joshua. To the brothers, many of whom have traveled to the far northern reaches of the district for the first time, <laughs> thank you for your fraternal support and your prayers for our brothers on this day. In a particular way, to the brothers of Calvert Hall College High School, Thank you for being here. Yet another instance of your faithful support of Joshua's discernment. And lastly, Brother Robert Schaefer, visitor of the District of Eastern North America. Thank you for your guidance and for being with us on this momentous day. Although these men may be at different thresholds of their vocational journey, both are demonstrating their deep faith in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. We gather together as witnesses to this special occasion as Joshua is just beginning his journey to more profoundly live out his baptismal calling. And Stephen is dedicating his life to God as a brother of the Christian schools. And so, as we do in all things, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Please join us in singing our entrance hymn, Found in Your Worship Aid. Father, and with the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. To prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us first call to mind our sins and unworthiness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. Holy Father, who through urging all the faithful to perfect charity, never ceased to prompt many to follow more closely in the footsteps of your Son, grant that those you have chosen for this special calling may by their way of life show to the church and the world a clear sign of your kingdom. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Their offspring shall be renowned among the nations, and their descendants in the midst of the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge them. They are the offspring the Lord has blessed. I will rejoice heartily in the Lord. My being exalts in my God. For he has clothed me with garments of salvation and wrapped me in a robe of justice. Like a bridegroom adorned with the diadem, as a bride adorns herself with jewels, as the earth brings forth its shoots and a garden makes its seeds spring up, so will the Lord God make justice spring up and praise before all the nations. The word of the Lord. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. They devoted themselves to teaching of the apostles and to communal life, to breaking the bread and to prayers. Awe came upon everyone, and many wonders and signs were done through the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their property and possessions and divide them among all according to each one's needs. 
Every day they devoted themselves to meeting together in the temple area and to breaking bread in their homes. They ate their meals with exaltation and sincerity of heart, praising God and enjoying favor with all the people. And every day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Amen, amen. I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The word of the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Father John Vidmar from Providence College, and I'm very happy and honored to be here. And thank you, Steve and Josh, for inviting me. We are here today to do a couple of things. One is to congratulate the two of you, Steve, on your final profession, and Josh on your first promises. And also to celebrate your decision much like mar marriage vows, to commit to religious life and specifically to the life of a teacher. And also to demand of them both faithfulness and excellence in that life. It's why you take vows in public, to show people what your word is worth. This commitment is sometimes very difficult to explain. The life of a teacher does not provide the kinds of rewards that the modern world embraces. Its rewards are long-term, sometimes very long-term, sometimes non-existent. In the corporate world, rewards are immediate. You write up a successful advertising brochure, and the board calls you in and applauds and might even give you a raise. You make a sale and you get a commission. Even musicians get instant gratification as they perform and get immediate applause. Builders congratulate each other at a ribbon cutting. None, none of this will happen to you. <laughs> <laughs> Students will go away and forget about you. When my students tell me they always want to stay in touch, I ask them, after 40 years of teaching, how many students do you think have stayed in touch with me? I hold up one hand and say, five, 
but I may be exaggerating. <laughs> it's probably four. Um, in my very first class in church history, this was at Ohio Dominican in Columbus, Ohio, I was so excited that after two years of teaching things I really didn't want to teach, I got to teach church history. And it was a subject that I loved and I just couldn't wait. And I had 40 students in that class and I gave it my best effort. And I thought I had the students listening. They were possibly even on the edge of their seats, asking good questions. I had visions of Lord Acton giving his inaugural lecture at Cambridge University about 100 years ago. And at the end of this first class, one student waited for all the others to leave and asked, Father, can you tell me, <clears throat> is this class going to pick up at all as the year goes on? <laughs> In other words, as the gospel, which we just heard, says, you will die. But unless you do so, unless that grain of wheat falls into the earth, you will remain only a grain of wheat. And it's a great reading because it continues. But if it dies, it will bear much fruit. What you are committing to may be hard for people to understand. You will be underpaid, appreciated, misunderstood, and it may be hard to explain why you chose this particular life. But I learned over the years that I did not have to explain myself. I just had to explain somebody else. And I want to tell you one story. I may have told this already at LaSalle. I'm known for repeating myself now. But it's a story of I was on a train that was going from Milan to London. And it's going to be a long train ride overnight. We are starting off at about 9 o'clock in the evening. <clears throat> and I found an empty uh, cabin. There were six seats in there. Nobody was in there. I thought, this is great. I can go in there and maybe just sleep. And as soon as I did so, four young men got into the cabin with me, pre pretty much filling it up. And they started, they had just met each other. They were all English, they were on their way home, three of them. And they were on their way home to London for a long weekend. And they started to introduce themselves. I am Mike, I'm a car mechanic, and I'm going home for the long weekend. And the next guy said, and I'm, Tommy, and I'm a car mechanic. They're all at Fiat. And I'm going home for the long weekend. And I thought to myself, what do I do? I was dressed like a normal person. <laughs> and I thought, this may be my big chance. And I thought to myself, I'm going to tell them my name is Cal Ripken, and I play, <laughs> and I play for the Baltimore Orioles. This is my chance. And then I thought, it's going to be really hard to lie to three car mechanics for 18 hours or something like that. And so the next guy said, I'm Mike, and I'm a car mechanic, and I'm going home for the long weekend. Oh, boy. So they looked at me and said yes. And I said, I'm John, and I am a Roman Catholic priest. And that silence that you have right now in this. <laughs> <clears throat> I was greeted with that. And one of them said, Mike said, well, why would you want to do that? You seem to be normal. <laughs> okay. And I said, there's a long story and, and there's a short story. And I gave him the short story. And I said, you know that story about Jesus Christ who was born in the manger and died on the cross and rose from the dead? And they said, yeah, we know that story. I said, well, I believe that it really happened. And this is the only way I felt that I could respond to that story. It doesn't mean we all have to respond that way, but we all have to respond to that story. And I think that's one of the things that you are going to challenge people about. Because everybody is going to ask, why are you doing this? You seem to be normal, okay? And your response has to be, 
You know that story about Jesus Christ? That he's born in the manger and died on the cross and rose from the dead? Well, I believe that it really happened. And we all need, again, to respond to that. It was something I think these three in the car with me had never considered. But that's what you are going to do with your life, to teach, not only through your various subjects, whatever they may be, but especially through your life. And as the prophet Isaiah tells us, as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord, the Lord, will cause goodness and praise. Thank you both today for your commitment and your witness, and may God fill you and your students with his grace. I'd like to invite Mr. Josh Bayshore to please come forward. Joshua, what do you seek here today? To live in community and there discern my vocation with the brothers of the Christian schools. In the presence of the most holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in response to God's call, to live more profoundly by baptismal, by baptismal consecration. I, Joshua William Bayshore, promise to live a community life centered on the gospel, to deepen my interior life through prayer, to become professionally prepared for my ministry, and to serve the poor through education. With your help, O oh God, and with the support of my brothers, I will keep these promises faithfully for one year. I welcome you, Josh, to live in community with the brothers of the Christian schools. And as symbols of your new relationship with us, I give you the St. LaSalle Medal to remind you of our founder, a lapel pin to witness to your commitment, and the brothers' rule to deepen more and more an understanding of our life. May they be reminders of your baptism and also of your promises to seek God's will for you within our institute. So please join me in welcoming Josh. I now invite Brother Stephen Barbaro to come forward. Stephen, what do you ask of God and of his holy church? I ask to remain in the Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools all the days of my life. In baptism, you have been consecrated to God's service. Are you resolved now to unite yourself ever more closely to God by professing your final vows as a brother of the Christian schools? I am. Are you willing, with God's help, to undertake a life of association of service for the poor through education, stability in the institute, obedience, chastity, and poverty, and to remain faithful to these vows for life? I am. Are you willing to strive with all your heart to love God and your neighbor by living the gospel with joy and by following the rule of the brothers of the Christian schools? I am. May God, who has begun this good work so beautifully in you, bring it to fulfillment. Most Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, 
I prostrate with the most profound respect before your infinite and adorable majesty. I consecrate myself entirely to you to procure your glory as far as I shall be able and as you will require me. For this purpose, I, Brother Stephen J. Barbaro, promise and vow to unite myself and to remain in society with the brothers of the Christian schools who are associated to conduct <coughs> together and by association schools for the service of the poor. I promise to go wherever I may be sent and to do whatever I may be assigned by the body of the society or its superiors. Wherefore, I promise a valid association for the service of the course of education, civility of the institute, obedience, chastity, poverty, and accordance with the goal of application and the rules of the institute. I will promise to keep these vows for all my life. Stephen's family for being here, and in a very special way to your mom. Mrs. Barbaro, thank you so much for giving us Stephen and for joining us in this journey. It's a special day for us, and thank you so much for being here. As many of you know, we are uh, an institute that began in France many, many centuries ago, and we've retained many of the customs along the years. And one of those customs is after a brother makes his commitment to, to be associated with us for life, that we invite his confreres, the brothers, to come forward and to offer the atola. So I invite the brothers to, to come forward and offer your support to Stephen at this important time in his life.
Francis, Richard, our bishop, and all other church leaders, that they may be blessed with the faith, compassion, and courage to be faithful shepherds of God's holy people. We pray to the Lord. Lord For Brother Stephen, on this his perpetual profession of vows, as he commits his life to preaching the gospel in the classroom, that he may be filled with faith, joy, and zeal, we pray to the Lord. Lord For Brother Joshua, on his first promises as apostolate of the brothers of the Christian schools, that he may exercise true faith in God and be open to further discerning his vocational calling and service of the church and those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord For the family, friends, and community members of Brother Stephen and Brother Joshua that have supported and encouraged their vocational discernment in ways both large and small, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear For former, current, and future students entrusted to the care of Brother Stephen and Brother Joshua, that they may be given the encouragement and guidance to lead lives of generosity and justice for all according to the good news, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear that God will continue to bless our institute with young men to carry on our charism of faith and zeal as brothers in our educational ministries. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear For the poor, the marginalized, and the suffering, that through the ministry of the church, they may experience the love and mercy of Christ in their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear We say, Hail Mary, full of in compassion, Holy Father, the offerings we bring you, and grant fraternal communion and spiritual freedom to all who set out joyfully to imitate your Son by following the narrow way. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them and all the faithful departed into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Taught by our Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive our trespasses against us. And lead us not. Lord, 
from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of your Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Receive in compassion, Holy Father, the offerings we bring you and grant fraternal communion and spiritual freedom. Excuse me, and say the final prayer. Strengthen your servants, O Lord, with this spiritual food and drink, so that always faithful to the call of the gospel, they may present, make present everywhere the living image of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Live Jesus in our hearts forever.